Here we got some more new cut content for Mr. Annie News. This one's called Rudius and Paul versus Zahydra. The battle to save Zenith, our glorious vegetable mother. Let's go. From the animation and atmosphere. It was amazing. Voice acting and music. Paul was really good, huh? Like, the voice acting, you could just... Even though this scene was a little annoying because, like, damn, you're really gonna get mad at Rudy right now and lose your temper. It is his character to do that, but, like, his voice acting there was really fucking good. Everything about this episode was pretty much perfect. What is there, then, to talk about? Well, aside from some... I know what to talk about. The thing that everyone's mentioning in everyone's Mushoku Tensei videos for anime only is the fact that Rudy actually did not lose focus. The moment of hesitation, which was heavily implied by the anime, it really looked like he was distracted. He wasn't. It's something that was impossible, apparently. Some explanations for Rudy's peculiar behavior. There's the interesting details behind the way they fought the Hydra, Paul's own perspective on the way things turned out, and Paul's most obviously happy about it. The question of why. They're all valuable additions. Because he that saves make an son and mom. Episode better. He saved the family. So, as I go through the best episode of season two so far, here's how this epic fight with the Hydra went in the novels. But before we get started, but first, Mujin merch drop incoming. Now, before I get into that, I know I've been talking about the Mugen apparel a lot lately, but we've just. Not Mujin. <laughs> Mugen. Okay. We have new shirts actually. Hold up. Hold up! Before they had like, uh, what's it called? Before they had like anime girl t-shirts? I... Ah, katana. Would you guys wear this in public? A katana. Blade. Some kind of great sword here. Ah, uh, maybe I would rock the purple one. The black and red one's too edgy. The white and purple one, this one actually looks kind of nice. Launched another maybe, new maybe the black and red? Genesis Let's see, what else? For both bands, but aren't those Is this Shion's blade actually? Hold up. Is this supposed to be Shion's blade? The purple one? Is it? Or am I wrong? It reminds me of a uh, fucking Shion from Reincarnated as a Slime, right? Those three are available to purchase right now, but if all you right. check attention, Anything? if you want Mushoku Tensei inspired apparel as well, I like the you can one. check all that out with the link down in the description. I got us a war, it's so fucking edgy. But Eris looks very cunny here. We've got the green Yeah, 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 yeah. Get the goddess set. You know what? He should send me a fucking free t-shirt. Then I will do an ad during the video reaction itself. Adception. I, I'll rock the fuck, I'll rock your t-shirt during the Mushoku Tensei reactions as well. I think that's a fair deal, man. I think that's totally fine. Not even asking for an affiliate discount code, nah. Just give me a t-shirt. There's a trio of stickers if you want. All right, all right, all right. Covering chapters eight to 11 from volume 12 of the light novel. With the last teleporter being right in front of them, Preparation was the most important thing right now. Okay. That meant taking stock of supplies, which in turn led Rudy to taking those advanced tier healing scrolls from Roxy. That was they were for, an yeah. emergency precaution oh, just in case his throat or lungs got crushed like last time. He was also... I can't say a cut-off torso though, huh? ...given a magically imbued crystal from Alina Lise, which was essentially a mana pot for if he or Roxy ran out. Okay. It wasn't something Rudy was particularly concerned with, but when exploring a labyrinth, magicians ran out of mana all the time, especially if the boss room was one of the arena types. This meant once you arena entered, type. you couldn't leave, so oh. unless you were ready to slay the boss as is, it was- We got kind of lucky here, huh? Like. The Hydra was hard to defeat, however, like, we could go in and out. Imagine we went in and we were stuck, right? The first round we went in, we were able to get out. I'm like, oh my god, this is actually kind of busted. Like, I feel like a really hard Labyrinth boss, like, it's one way and that's it. You're just there to kill it and you're done. It was always best to ensure you were as prepared as possible for it. I just realized. We're supposed to be watching like this. What, do you, what layout do you actually like, actually? This or that? I don't know. Some people say they want more of me, but I feel like the main content is Annie News, but I don't know. Now, aside from the wonder of being face to face with the Hydra, what intrigued Rudy more was the condition of Zenith. It wasn't a worried panic like how we saw with Paul though, but rather a more confused how did she get there type look. Hmm. His first thoughts weren't of concern or how do we save her, but instead a series of questions asking why. 
how was it that Zenith ended up inside this crystal and... Yeah, like, did she get Mana Disaster teleported into a crystallized form? Or did she get unlucky and just got ported into the Labyrinth boss, the Guardian, and then the Guardian crystallized her? Or did she get transported somewhere else and then she went on adventures and she went into the s rank dungeon for whatever reason and then while attempting to defeat the boss she then got crystallized i don't know why was it that she was all the way down here being guarded by this hydra it's an interesting perspective i'll get more into soon the man god did it this is all according to his plan. Remember, whenever you think that you think that you know the script, no. Every one of action that Rudius is doing benefits the man god somehow. He wanted this to happen. Reverse psychology. Telling Rudy, you're going to regret it if you go. I think I like that conspiracy theory. Someone mentioned that like maybe man god is like, you know, doing uh, reverse psychology and made Rudy to go to beggar the content and then... Save Zenith, lose Paul. For what? Now what do we have unlocked? A new arc of depression. How does this benefit the man god? Does Orsted even know how Paul was supposed to die? Paul said, sorry, Orsted said Paul's not supposed to have a son because obviously Isekai character. Does this mean that Paul's death was also in, like um, something that shouldn't have happened immediately? And the man god did this and, and Orsted's going to be like, that motherfucker did it again? I don't know. Why would a man god do this to otherworld like Rudy? Because he is an otherworld, specifically because he's an anomaly, some being that shouldn't exist in this world, a being that even like goes beyond Orsted's imaginations, right? I mean, not imaginations, he has Nanahoshi, but I feel like because he's an otherworlder, and maybe man god just bored. Maybe also man god just bored and he's just like, sees Rudy as a playable character and he likes to make him do different decisions and he has fun. Who knows? But for now, all you need to know is that this was what Rudy was thinking about. There were so many doubts behind the plausibility of all this happening by chance. So like, when she got crystallized, how is she just in this picture-perfect frame? Because like, you, you really think that she get crystallized like this? I think that if she was awake, I'd be getting crystallized like, ah! and then I would permanently look like, in the ice, but it wouldn't obviously look appealing, right? She looks like a maiden, frozen, like a sleeping, slumbering princess. Just, oh. Like, what the? Did she pose for this shit? Was she already sleeping when she got crystallized? Was she cautious? I don't think it really matters. I'm nitpicking right now, but it's like, what is this pose, man? It was before Rudy could express any of them, though, that Paul would charge in and Rudy be forced to engage. Since he wanted to end the fight in only one hit, what he charged up was a stone cannon on part body of this one. Body a projectile strong enough to obliterate the body of the immortal demon king. Unfortunately, it... <laughs> hey, the immortal demon king's torso got lopped off and he survived. How come Paul can't? Well, probably because he's a fucking immortal demon king. ...to pierce this Hydra's defenses, so as we saw in the anime, the only person capable of that was Paul. His movements were so fast that even Rudy's eye of foresight couldn't keep up. There was a frame his like technique that, yeah. refined to the point that even if he didn't cut through a head in one slice, he Paul would flip so his sick. body and use the centrifugal force from it to ensure he made the cut the second time. Both swords seemed perfect for the job, but to add a little context as to why this shorter one was better... Oh, I thought he had this just to flex for Rudy for the daddy so cool moment. It's because it was a magic item imbued with the highly rare steel cutting ability. Steel cutting. This meant the harder the exterior of the opponent Malphite. was up against, the sharper his sword would become and the easier it would be to slice through. Malphite is such a bullshit character, dude. Oh my god. It was an amazing weapon that scaled in power proportionally to an enemy's durability. That's how you slice it so nicely. Meant it was extremely dull when trying to cut softer things, but that's actually the reason why we Paul got the other was sword. even able to secure it. You see, when a merchant was demoing it by trying to cut through dried meat, his inability to slice any of it made it seem like the blade was useless. But Paul, Paul of knew. Course, recognized it as that extremely rare steel cutting ability, what? so that was enough for him to step in and purchase it. Yoink probably got such a good deal out of it. They probably sold it for nothing, thinking that this is a busted ass sword. It was a bargain buy he secured for literal pennies, <laughs> making Easy. it an impressive find whose true value was shining now. Since the Hydra's scales were very clearly tough, that made Paul's sword the perfect tool against them. It's just that at this point there wasn't any strategy and Paul's reckless behavior was putting his support in danger. 
the injury she received was actually a lot more sizable she than had that what twice. we saw in the anime, but nothing too severe that basic tier healing magic couldn't fix. From the way Rudy described it, it was a deep laceration that would have required dozens of stitches back in the old Really? It does like a One simple that burn. just from a slight graze with the Hydra's razor-sharp exterior. You know what's crazy? Irina Reze as a frontline tank, I didn't believe it. She had a buckle shield and during the adventure Rudy to, you know, get here, she was gonna pop it up. But like, against the Hydra, like, damn. She is truly a frontliner. I just never expected it from a woman her size and a shield that didn't seem too important. But like, that one-handed buckler shield, bro, she was going off. That made it clear that getting close was dangerous since if the lightest touch was enough to cut you open, those incapable of defending would be sliced to ribbons. It was an important concern that definitely needed to be discussed, but Paul clearly didn't even register it. He His mad. focus on Zenith closed out the fact Alina Lise got hurt, and that didn't really sit too well with Rudy. I mean, yes she was the party's tank, but just because taking damage was part of the job, that didn't mean that Paul should completely ignore her. It was a state of mind not beneficial to anyone. What bothered Rudy more than that, though, was once again that burning question of why. Reason Crystallized? being that there were quite a few things that just didn't make sense here. Like, even if you set aside the question of why Zenith got imprisoned here, and how that pose. was it that she was teleported here to begin with, and how know. did Geese know that this was the condition she was stuck in? The former is a question that ties back to Rudy's research, and the latter refers to the peculiar wording Geese chose to use when describing Zenith. Right, she was captured here, right? That's the specific wording Andy News also mentioned last video. Captured by the Guardian Labyrinth? Is that the implication? The, lab the, the, the Hydra wanted to capture Zenith? Someone else is at play? To focus on the former first, though, teleportation into a solid object wasn't something easily accomplished. But you can Just do it. Just like how you can't cast an offensive spell directly within a person's body, to transport a human into the Earth itself was just as impossible. There was an insurmountable resistance between the mana at the destination and the mana in the person being teleported. One that made the two wholly incompatible with each other. But that didn't mean that it was impossible, though, since Rudy did speculate that with an obscene amount of mana, it probably could be done. Mana disaster, obscene amount of mana, or some other being. Demon god Laplace did it, I don't know. So, as unlikely as it was for Zenith to be teleported right into this crystal, it wasn't impossible so long as enough mana was used. Who's mana? This makes me wonder whether Zenith was actually teleported here or not, since with her being the only case of teleportation like this, Perhaps it wasn't the incident that had sent her here. Perhaps another factors at play and we're just getting looped in now. Man God! Way, I'm sure it's something that'll be answered later. Now. So it's like, was she teleported into the crystallization? Was she teleported outside and went in and then got crystallized? How did this get set up? I don't know. There's a couple of different options. But I kind of want to believe that she got ported in there... And then if that's the implication, then we need a lot of mana to do it. Where is the mana from? Is it from the mana disaster? Is, this, is, is that carry over? If not, did someone else have a play in it? The only person that has a huge mana that I know of is Rudy and Laplace. I don't know. Maybe Mangon. I'm, I'm just going to blame Mangon. And why is she naked? Uh, fan service. Booba cell. As for how Geese knew that she was captured like this, well, it was this choice of wording that made him seem suspicious too. What I mean is that it implied he knew this was the state she was in without anyone ever coming here. Keith, explain An yourself. An impossible scenario considering that no one has made it here. How does that make His sense? His story was that she was found by adventurers, but if that was true, then how did they get all the way here, make it back, and tell Geese about it? They didn't, right? They couldn't go to the bottom and we didn't see them anymore afterwards. How the fuck did Geese know that she was in that state captured? It's pretty obvious that they didn't, so something about the way Geese framed his information just wasn't adding up anymore. Sussy Geese. Geese, did you do this? Did he slip up? He has a deal with the man god. Nah, I don't think that makes sense. I don't want to believe that. It was enough of a mystery that Rudy knew he needed to ask about it later. Next episode. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see any of that in the anime, but that's the situation as is with all the smaller bits and details. To switch back to the problem at hand now, though, the Hydra here wasn't one of the three confirmed living versions in the world right now. In the demon continent, there was the white, gray, and gold scale ones, oh. but the one guarding Zenith had green scales. 
This is like a legendary secret Hydra that no one's ever seen because obviously it's so rare that anyone would even make it down here. It was a fabled monster whose last recorded presence was during the second Great Human Demon War. Damn. A period of time from over 5,000 years ago. Legends say they were annihilated when the continent was split, but clearly that wasn't true given the one standing right in front of them. So, this was a monster Rudy knew him and his party were very much outmatched by. So much so that he actually felt it was best to retreat and create a more specialized party. And then Paul got it was mad! Unlikely they'd find anyone whose specialty was the Hydra, but if there was at least one other person who could slice cleanly through the Hydra's neck, that alone would have made the fight significantly easier. It's just too bad that Rudy knew Paul wouldn't allow it. Given the state he was currently in, even if Rudy did leave and took everyone else with him, he knew Paul would have stayed behind and fought the Hydra solo. That's just how committed he was to ending this problem now. And the only thing that got ended was... Uh, Paul. So, before we get more into how they're going to handle it, for a bit more context on Rudy's impartial behavior towards Zenith, a large part of it was actually because he'd already given up on her. That's really? a bit more blunt than how the novel... I thought that Rudy just was like, well, the enemy said, like, I have no personal connections to you because I'm a grown ass man as a child. And like, yeah, you are my mother, but it's like we don't have this bond. So I thought that's why he was assessing it in such a cool, calm way. We'll put it, but what Rudy was expecting was literally nothing. He knew the odds of her surviving were minimal to begin with, so in the years she'd been gone, he'd prepared himself for the worst. Okay. Like, he didn't expect to find any trace of her, let alone her body. Steal it's how I assume he was able to calmly question whether she was alive or not. This obviously wasn't appropriate given who she was to him, but as we saw in the anime, Zenith was less his mother and more just this person he happened to live with. A <laughs> yeah, likely product honestly. of how he perceived interpersonal relationships at the time. I kind of feel bad for Zenith, man. I feel really... Like, this girl Zenith straight up showed up, got ogled by her own, you know, degenerate isekai son, and and then she got cheated on by Paul with fucking, you know, with the maid. And then she got ported it and now her brain is gone. It's just like something is missing here. I don't know exactly what the condition is. She doesn't seem to be able to talk. Is she simply mute? I don't think so. I think it's more than that. She just pretty much lost all, not motor functions, but intellectually it's, it's gone. So it's like, damn. Zenith is such a pitiful character in Mushoku Tensei. Now, the most important thing prior to going back in was determining a formation and setting everyone's roles in it. Reason being that with Paul being the only one capable of beheading and Riddy being the only one capable of Seer. cauterizing, ensuring both could do their jobs uninterrupted was absolutely essential. This meant Alina Lise and Tallhand would have to be decoys and Roxy would need to stay at the Healing, back and support. act as their healer. The result was an arrangement known as the Imperial Cross Formation. Oh. In the anime, it wasn't so prominent, but as you'll soon see, it's actually a major part in how they were able to defeat the Hydra. I mean, I enjoyed the overall coordination, but there's no way I could have assumed that it was like a cross-like formation because so many different things were happening in the anime. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's cool to know a little bit more details about the positioning. They were significantly more organized than how they looked here. To finish off this conversation first though, Paul's statement to Rudy wasn't at all as cruel as you might think it was. Even if it as kills you. As absurd as it is to hear your own parents say to fight to the death, the message being sent wasn't so much the literal words of what he was saying, but rather the genuine conviction behind it. What I mean is that Put your by life Paul on the saying line. what he did, he was displaying in full the trust he had for Rudy. Since his own determination would have him save Zenith at the cost of his own life, the fact he expected the same from Rudy meant he was thinking of him as an equal here. He was seeing Rudy for the adult he was and showing he believed in him just as much as he believed in himself. A okay. message intent on getting Rudy to share the same determination as his own. He didn't actually want Rudy to die since to save Zenith and lose Rudy in the process was, in his own words, completely nonsensical. Paul genuinely wanted to save everyone. He and he did, but himself went out in the blazing glory. Thank you, Thor, for the gift to sub, my man. Appreciate it. He just needed Rudy to see how much he respected him first. Now, the anime portrayed the fight amazingly in its own way, but that Imperial Cross formation wasn't something you'd know they were actively doing. Hell no. So, it was Paul in front, handling one hat at a time, 
Alina Lise and Tall Hand on either side serving as both decoys and defense. Rudy right behind Paul so he could cauterize immediately, then Roxy behind him Healing. to provide heals for everyone. It was an optimized formation that took advantage of the Hydra's attack patterns. Since it typically only attacked with three heads at a time, this meant Alina Lise and Tall Hand could parry one each, then that left the other for Paul and Rudy to handle all of Why the only rope. three at a time? Occasionally it would swing a fourth head just to switch things up, but whether at Alina Lise or Tall Hand, Two heads at once weren't enough to overcome either of them. Even if either did get injured by a mistimed parry, Roxy would just run up, heal them, then return back to her position. They were a well-oiled machine, both highly methodical and organized. I thought the Hydra would try to do some kind of ranged attack to take out the healer, but it's not really intelligent enough to understand, huh? One whose sole purpose was to ensure that Rudy was protected. This allowed him to focus only on Sir. burning, and while the trust required to do so was immense, by the third head, Rudy knew focusing on anything else was unnecessary. Alina Lise and Tall Hand had proved- Man, you know what I've been fucking OP? If we had like... Fire enchantment on the blade, such that if Paul cut through the Hydra, then it would immediately cauterize. You know what I mean? Thank you, Thor, for another five gift to subs, my man. I appreciate that's very generous, but... Imagine if we had some kind of flame enchant on our sword and we could just take it out immediately, but unfortunately, that wasn't possible. Proven he had nothing to worry about. Any head that got even remotely close was immediately deflected and quickly decapitated. So, for a while this strict regiment was working spectacularly. It was when the group got the Hydra to five heads left, though, that once again it would switch things up. It, it had decided itself. to attack with all five heads at once now. Oh, a not focus yet, yet. charge directed straight towards Talhan. He was able to dodge two and block another, but by the time the fourth came to attack two, I thought he was done was here. Tall Hand could do to defend himself. I thought he was fucking done he here, dude. He was immediately grabbed just like how we saw in the anime, then about to be split in half by the incoming fifth head. Luckily, Paul was there to save him, but Oof. that was the real reason why Tall Hand got grabbed like that. That's what you fucking get for grabbing little boys, Tall Hand. I assume it's because the how does it feel now? Identified him as the weakest. What? Tall Hand's the weak- well, I guess relative to Rudy Paul and Edina is in the front line, I guess Tall Hand is, I guess, you know, default fourth place. I don't know. I thought that Tall Hand would be done there, but I'm like, whew, he's not gonna die here. It didn't make sense for Tall Hand to die. Fast forward now to the Hydra's trump card, and this was an attack known as Dragon's Breath. He isn't an even ability here. strong enough to melt steel and evaporate a bog, yet- Thank you, Nana's Gifter! For the gift of tier 1 sub, man, appreciate that. One not so powerful as to get the best of Rudy. What Rudy had done with his magic here, he suspected would have taken the equivalent of 10 magicians or more. There were the no water barrier, right? That was such a cool way to like counter the fire breath. And I'm like, are we going to erect some kind of wall? Some kind of like, you know, iron wall, earth wall? But it's like, nah. Just like huge amount of water so that it's just going to evaporate and just counter the fire. No ordinary magicians that could have defended the Hydra's attack like this. Rudy, as we know, wasn't ordinary though, but had the Hydra waited and used each head's dragon breath one after the other, a longer consecutive <laughs> shot might have been more of a struggle for him. That would have been fucking hilarious. Thanks for the gifted man. Thank you, Anonymous Gifter. But like, if, so like Rudy's thing is like a burst shield and he can't hold it for so long. So the Hydra just spaced it out. It's so just like, okay. Psh, psh. Then Rudy be like, wait, I'm running out. It's fucking stalling on me. Rudy didn't understand why it didn't, but what he did know was that once they were done, they couldn't use it again. It wasn't possible for the same head to fire Dragon's Breath in quick succession like that. So it was after this that Rudy would start to think that they'd won, but right as he was cauterizing the second to last head, once again the Hydra would do something different. It bit its own head. It would head. flail its severed heads as if they were whips. Not a yet. last ditch move that was Not clearly yet. the result of being driven into a corner. Rudy's Eye of Foresight made it clear that this was what was coming, but because he was so close to the Hydra's body, he couldn't understand what exactly it was doing. Mm -hmm. He was unable to comprehend the spiked weapons of destruction flying straight towards him. Something about the positioning? Something about being too close in proximity? Was not able to make him read the situation correctly? Paul, on the other hand, knew this was exactly what was coming, so he was completely focused while Rudy was not. Okay, so that's what I'm saying, right? When I say Rudy got distracted, Rudy lost focus, is, is this not it? 
Other people, like, light novel elitists are coming into the videos like, Actually, Rudy was not, in fact, distracted. He was locked in, but it was an impossible scenario. And I'm like, ah, I, I, I feel like this is going back to semantics. If you're going to tell me that it was an impossible situation and he was confused and he lost focus, doesn't that mean that he lost focus? I don't know. I feel like the anime was clearly portraying a moment where Rudy was reading some shit and I thought that he was getting ahead of himself, being happy and excited that there's only one more head left. And then he thought, he, he realized that, oh shit, I just lost focus for a moment. I'm getting fucked right now. And then Paul saved him, but... I don't know. Didn't understand what's happening. Okay, okay, let's go with that line of thinking. If you're not understanding what's happening, does that not imply that you're not focused? You're distracted. That's why you don't understand what's happening. Right? Again, we're going with semantics. What does it mean to be locked in? What does it mean to be focused and lose focus? But ultimately, he got confused there, right? And I feel like if you're confused, you're not focused. But again, this is just... It's, 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 it's meaningless fucking semantics debating. I don't know. The anime, I thought, the, the anim, I thought that the anime made it very clear that he was kind of just like thinking about winning and then being excited and then got caught, caught off guard. That's what the anime only experience was for me. Just based on the voice acting, the way that Rudy kind of felt happy and almost like a burden was lifted as he saw that there's only one more head left, but I don't fucking know, man. In fact, he was so confident in the experience of everyone around him that he completely forgot Rudy was still a rookie in the labyrinth. Whereas him, Talhand, and Alina Lise knew to avoid this one last attack, Rudy simply didn't, and that's how he was caught. It was a lack of experience that unfortunately proved to be fatal. Ooh. That's when Rudy would finish the job with Stone King. That is such a rough fucking... Damn, bro. And then... Unfortunately proved oh. to be fatal. Oh, Paul, you cannot walk that off. Yeah, it's pretty impossible. It's a clean fucking cutoff, huh? Thanks for another gift to sub, Thor. That's when Rudy would finish the job with Stone Cannon, but not without costing him his arm first. That's you right, see, he did lose an arm. Hydra's scales covered its eyelids too, just the act of blinking sliced straight through him. Ah, oh, I see. I was a little bit confused, but that was a cool scene where he just gouged the Hydra and then did some kind of like magic within where drills are spiking out, right? Thank you, Thor, for another gifted, my man. Appreciate that. But, so he blinked. The eyelid literally cut his fucking arm. The rest was the Hydra's muscles snapping his bone apart. Ugh. It was once Rudy came to his senses after this that his playback of what happened revealed why Paul got hit. Long story short, it was essentially a matter of Paul being too skilled. Honestly? Wait, 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 it essentially matter. Wait, 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 what did you say? He was too skilled? Because he knew the, exp he knew the outcome. He knew it was coming. And then he saved Rudy because of that experience. And that's what happens. Thanks for the gift to sub, man. Got hit. Long story short, it was essentially a matter of Paul being too skilled. You see, a kick this strong would have sent any normal person reeling back from the recoil. Because <laughs> Paul was someone who could fight with battle aura, recoil. Though, the recoil which should have moved his own body out of the way. The battle aura never gets mentioned in the anime. It's supposed to be like this coding, like a hockey with mana to like imbue yourself and reinforce, but it never gets fucking mentioned. Thank you for another gift to Thor, man. Two was no longer present and instead kept him stationary. It had made it so where Rudy was before was exactly where he ended up. Oof. Now, as for what Paul thought about all this... He's happy. I think he was very happy. Thanks for giving this up, Thor. But I think that he was genuinely happy at the end. Paul's, he cares more about saving his family. He cares more about Rudy being safe and the fact that we saved Zenith. And if he dies in the process, so be it. It's a worthy sacrifice. My man went smiling as he died. I think it was a great, it sucks that he died, but like Paul as a character, He's so fascinating because he's like our dad, but he's also got a lot of problems. And he's a very realistic person, a very high-tempered, angry dad that's also sometimes very funny and 
fatherly loving, but I feel like a lot of people, well, uh, I, I don't know what kind of parents you have, but there's a moment in your childhood when you realize that your parents actually don't have it all figured out. And that's like a, like a third eye awakening moment. Because as a kid, you think that your parents are your gods, right? But at a certain point, you start to realize that life is hard and your parents are also just trying their best and trying to figure shit out as they go. They don't know everything. And that's a very humbling moment. And it honestly makes you more empathetic towards the parents. And Paul was like a perfect depiction of that from the beginning because Rudy didn't really see him as a father. He already basically taught himself everything, right? He, he did everything. Paul didn't really get any chance to be a father. He lost everything. He went through like alcohol, depression. There was a whole bad shit going on in season one with punching Rudy and, you know, and relieving some of the guilt and then lashing out on that. But then he got back together. And I just feel like he's such a realistic and a broken character who is plenty of fault but good parts as well and then finally ending his character arc by having him save his family with his life i thought that was like a beautiful ending for paul even though i want him to live i think that this is a very suiting way to go and everyone saw it coming but i thought paul's a fantastic character his only thought was to save rudy the moment he saw rudy was in trouble his reaction was immediate and without any thought for what came next the rest was him taking in the aftermath, but right as he would try and ask for healing too, his inability to do so combined with the looks on everyone's faces revealed the somber fact that he was dying. Now, here's where I'd usually go over what his last thoughts were too. But that's a different video, and apparently that's actually pretty important. I've seen the links on, you know, Discord, people showing me light novel parts exactly about Paul's thoughts, but I'm sure we're going to cover that next video. But the CD drama does such a great job conveying them that I'm just going to go ahead and play that instead. Oh, never mind, we do it right now! This is the exact video that you guys linked. It'll also serve as the end of the video, so if you enjoyed what you saw and want to see more, be sure to like, like him, and guys. subscribe if you Y'all know what to already. do. But now, try not to cry too much. You think I'm gonna fucking cry at a children's cartoon? Come on, I'm a grown ass man. I'm a burly, masculine, strong ass alpha giga chat. They don't. Tears coming down? Uh uh. Uh uh. I ain't crying. Let's listen. Oh god. No, it's the full voice acting! Norn is. I should not, because she's cracked. Lilia, what kind of face will she make? Oh, fuck, dude. He's just thinking about his entire fucking family. <laughs> Lilia did break down, right? That's one of the people that we saw immediately, and there was like no dialogue, just soundtrack, right? And she just like, we just walked up, and she's all happy. It's like, wow, everyone, and then we're like, where's Paul? And we're like, <sighs> and then she figures it out. It's like, oh, oh, the creeping realization. I think of all the characters, if you were to look back in the episode, the first person to realize that Paul was missing and potentially thought that he was dead was the gloomy looking girl with the long bangs that has like the maid's kind of staff in the back. Do you know what I'm talking about? She was like far left corner in that panel with Lilia in frame and the girl with the long eye bangs, right? She figured out immediately. She was like, wait, what's going on? Where's Paul? <laughs> he died with regrets. No! <laughs> <sighs> and like, these are all Paul's inner thoughts while Rudy's looking down and he can't hear anything, right? Of course. It's better than Rudy dying. Oh, that's a fucking dagger. Oh, that's a fucking... Oh. That was such a bad fucking end. It's not a bad ending, but like last anime reaction. Damn, ending the stream on that episode was fucking heavy.
and the inner thoughts. He actually had regrets. I thought he was smiling. I thought he was proud. And that's kind of the way that I want to still think that he died protecting his family, proud that they're safe and it's worth it. But like, of course, every human is going to have like these insecurities and creeping thoughts when you're dying, right? I mean, I've never been in that kind of situation, but I hear no matter how hard you act in life, no matter how, you know, dominant and strong you try to portray yourself, when you're in a near life or death situation, that's when a person's true nature shows up. And damn. His immediate thoughts were, of course, his family and the things that he wanted to do more. He wanted to be a grandchild, see the fucking grandchildren. Sad as fuck. And we waited, and this is what we wanted, man. We said, bring us the fucking turning point, and we got it. Ladies and gentlemen, please go give Mr. Anuza a like on his video. Sub to his channel if you haven't. And now, we're gonna go in in about two days. We're gonna have Mushoku Tensei again. What's gonna happen this time? Zenith, bro. We're gonna have Zenith, and I don't know how that's gonna be handled, but I will see you guys then.